Animations can make your website feel more polished and professional. In this video, you'll learn how to create amazing animations just like Apple uses for their product pages. So today we're taking a look at this amazing clonable by Jonas Arleth. The link is going to be in the description to this clonable if you want to try it out for yourself and follow along the tutorial, the explanation of this clonable. But without further ado, let's jump right into the Webflow file. So on the left side here, we've got all the layers, right? We've got all the different classes that we want to be looking at, which ones are actually animated and which ones aren't. So I'm going to take a look at the files here and I'm going to start by going to the top one here and just seeing what we're working with. So we see that the position is relative. And as we go down, the text effect wrapper has a black color. So I'm going to move that into white. And then we see that there is still a black layer here. So let's go ahead and just hide this for now. So we see that we have the text here, the text that we're going to be using in this scenario. So we have almost like a mock iPhone website going on here, a mock page, but this is the text that we're working with. So the way that this effect works to kind of explain it overall is we have three main components. So one of those components is going to be the text, right? So that's just a regular text block or a paragraph in this case that we've added some text, we've, we've colored it white, but that's pretty much it. Then we've got an overlay that is made up of this gradient here. So we've got some black, some pink, and then black again. Now, if we wanted to, we could create this to be green, to be blue, to be whatever we want it to be. But in this case, we're just going to go with the tutorial here or with the default file. So we've got these colors going on here and then we have a sticky element. Now the sticky element is going to help us create this effect when we see here. So as we scroll down, we see that the text stays where it is. And when we leave that position or when we finish that, that movement, we no longer need that sticky element. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo this italic here for some reason that was just enabled really quickly, but we can go ahead and get rid of that. So if we see the effect with the black background as it's intended, we can get an idea of the overall intention for this, right? So the sticky element here, we've got hundred percent view height and we can see that it's sticky with zero. So that's going to be sticking all the way to the top here. And we can see that by this blue line that's touching all the way at the body. And if we wanted to, just to see how this works, we can move this to 20 viewport height, which is going to be 20% of the total height of the viewport. And so as we see now, we have the effect is stuck to the top, but that doesn't necessarily make too much sense for us right now, just to see exactly how sticky works in this scenario. But to see how we can actually transform this animation to work for us. So maybe we want, we want to change the text. Maybe we want to change the colors of the animation, the duration of the animation in case you have a longer website, in case you have a longer page, something like that. Then we have to go into the text effect wrapper. So in the text effect wrapper, we'll see that if we click on it, there's a few different settings that we need to take into account. So the first thing we need to take into account when we go into the interactions here is going to be the animation boundaries, the scroll animations, and the smoothing. And also, of course, the trigger settings, if you don't want it to be triggered on mobile or on tablet and things like that, then you can just go ahead and check these off. But in this scenario, we'll leave them on. So we've got text effect. So we can see that we have the animation boundaries here and we can see that they're only going to start playing once the element is fully visible. Now, this is super important because you wouldn't want the element or the animation to start playing if you're not directly seeing what, what you want to see, right? And of course, it also finishes the entire animation when the element is fully invisible. So as we go ahead and click into the scroll animations, we see that we are matched with three different classes here. So as we go ahead and click into the scroll animations here, we'll see that we're matched with two individual classes and that's all it really takes for this animation to work. But we have the text effect inner, which is going to be the wrapper that wraps the gradient and the paragraph. So the actual text, and then we have the gradient itself and those two just move up and down depending on where we are on the screen so to start off the animation here i'm going to click live preview is on so we can actually see it working and i'm still in the x-ray mode so shift command x to start to see the colors there there we are and we can start to see a little bit about what's going on in terms of this animation so we've got the text effect inner at zero percent opacity when we're just getting started so we're not seeing anything inside of this of this wrapper, right? We're not seeing any of it. But as we start to scroll down and further, further into the page, we see that we want the gradient to start to move up 
in opacity. So we have 100% opacity as we're just getting started. And then the gradient is also at its start point, right? And then as we move all the way down the page, just like at 60% or when we want it to be finished, we have the gradient that has moved 86% down the page. So we have the gradient that is moving, not necessarily the text block or the sticky effect. It's just the gradient that is moving up and down. And that is what's creating that effect. So we have a sticky wrapper, we have the text block, and we have the gradient that then moves up and down depending on where you are on the page. And as we finish our animation here, we also have the text effect inner, so the wrapper that goes to 100% opacity and then back down to zero so that it moves out of picture. And we can clearly see that when we go ahead and move this to white, if I can find it. So we go ahead and move that into white. So we can see that as we start to finish the animation, the wrapper goes ahead and disappears. So that is great if you want to start adding more and more and more animations, it's just like Apple would. So let's go ahead and move that back to black so we can see the full effect here. But one important thing to notice about this effect is how exactly the overlay works for this. So we can change anything we want about this text, including, for example, what the text actually says. If we go ahead and click here, if I move this all the way up, we can go ahead and just double click on this. And I'm just gonna say this tutorial has been great, just like that. And I'm gonna move it back into the inner. So we can see that if we go ahead and preview this, we have the same effect, just a little bit lower, it's a little bit faster, but we can see that we can start to manage any piece of text that we want in this but it's going to be depending on the size of your breakpoint, the size of the screen, the animation, the duration, and all of that is obviously going to be a big factor in this. And one way that this animation actually works is by this gradient. So you guys remember that I talked to you about this gradient, right? We can go ahead and change this to be pink, to be blue, to be whatever we want it to be. But the most important thing about this is the blending effect, because without this blending effect, this wouldn't happen. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we could do this, for example, with clipping, so we could clip just to the text, or we could have this dark effect that we have here. So the way that the darken effect works is it reads all the colors on your screen and it only shows the darkest colors. So the way that the darken effect works is that it reads all the colors on your screen, it compares them all, and it only keeps the darkest ones. So in this case, this is great for having a dark background. It really shows off the brighter colors here. This works perfectly for our animation. And if we wanted to see this be, for example, green or pink, we can go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna go into this color here. And I'm just going to use the same one just a few different times. So we can see this example so right now it should be green, just like that. So maybe at the top, it's still a little bit purple, just there. So we can go ahead and do that. Cool. So I hope that this makes sense on how you can accomplish this in your own portfolio. If you want to go ahead and copy this entire thing and paste it in your own project, then it's definitely doable as well. The only thing that you need to remember is obviously going to be the size of the breakpoints, the viewport height that you've got going on over in the text wrapper here. You've got 260 viewport height. So in this case, that is going to be controlling the entirety of the wrapper, so the entire effect. That is the entire length that it's going to be. So if you guys wanna take a deeper dive into Webflow, then check out the Webflow Masterclass. The link is gonna be in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.